Well, hello, friends, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to Boston.com's Cocktail Club. I'm your host, Jackson Cannon, and in a minute, I'll be joined by the legendary barkeep, Patrick Sullivan. Tonight, we're making drinks with Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey, catching up on the restaurant and bar community, and of course, sharing tips that pros use to make great drinks at home. When you registered, if you clicked through to Gordon's Wine and Spirits and purchased the Irish Whiskey Kit St. Patrick's Day edition, we have almost everything you need. Profits from those kits go to off their plate. This is an awesome charity. It buys meals from restaurants that need the business and distributes them to frontline workers and others in need. All the while, we'd be taking your questions from the chat. If there's anything we don't get to tonight, I'm easy to track down on social media. Uh, Cannon Jacks at both Twitter and Instagram and Jackson Cannon on Facebook and Clubhouse. All right, the ingredients that you're going to need tonight, you'll need some Irish whiskey. I have this great bottle from our sponsor, Tullamore Dew, of the XO Rum Cask Finish that I'll be using in both the cocktails tonight. Uh, for the Dubliner, you'll also need some sweet vermouth, um, some Grand Meunier or other orange liqueur, and a bit of orange bitters. We're going to garnish that one with a little bit of lemon twist. You can use an orange. But I really like when you're using something with a little orange liqueur like this and the layers of flavor from the orange bitters to hit that with like the lemon peel. It just gives you a little more depth of citrus expression in that drink. For the hot toddy, you'll also need some honey, some lemon juice, but don't juice your lemon. We'll, we'll make a couple twists out of that first before we juice the lemon for that. Uh, the whiskey and of course, plenty of hot water. So if you're doing it in the kitchen, you don't have one of these rapid tea kettles like I've got here, uh, throw the teapot on the stove, go ahead, let that water heat up a little bit so it'll heat up faster when we make that drink second a little bit yeah, later tonight. Um, other equipment you'll need, some sort of mixing glass or a cocktail tin or a pint glass to stir your Dubliner in. Um, you'll need uh, something to measure. We use these jiggers in the bar that are uh, compound measurements two over one and three quarters over a half. If you don't have that, a tablespoon will do great. A tablespoon is half an ounce. So it's really easy to convert these ounce-based recipes into tablespoons. Um, you'll need a knife and a cutting board, a long spoon for stirring the Dubliner, more appropriate kind of hot drink spoon for making the toddy, uh, cutting board, plate, knife, peeler, most of the stuff that you're going to need for glassware tonight. I'm going to use a coupe for the cocktail. I'm going to put some ice in that right now so it's getting uh, chilled down so that when we serve this drink, it's in a nice chilled glass. And then if your water gets hot, you may want to pre-warm your hot drink cup. I'm going to use, uh, a lot of times we use clear glass in the bar. It's nice. You can see everything. This is by a local artist. Michelle Throws Things is her handle on Instagram. Really great pottery, love her stuff. It's my favorite mug these days. So that's what I'm gonna use. All right, that's pretty much everything you'll need for the two cocktails. The influence of Patrick Sullivan's long and storied career in Boston area bars and restaurants, it just can't be overstated. In 1998, he purchased the Windsor Tap in Cambridge and transformed it into the B-Side Lounge an award-winning gastro pub meets classic cocktail haven mashup that provided a crucial spark for the burgeoning local cocktail scene. After a 10-year run in that location that produced a staggering amount of the city's craft bartenders, Pat expanded upon the work he'd done at the B-side, becoming Legal Seafood's director of bars, where he oversaw the shift to a more bar-centric culture for this iconic Boston franchise. 2021 finds him back in the hustle, opening a yet to be named place in a suburban neighborhood of Boston. And instead of letting us put out the tip jar for Patrick, he's asked everyone to support a local bar or restaurant. He's a terrific operator and bartender and Irish whiskey cocktail enthusiast and a friend. Please welcome Patrick Sullivan. Hi hey, friends. Patrick. How are you, sir? Doing great, Jackson. How are you? Thanks for inviting me. Just a pleasure to have you. That looks like a fun, it's albeit raw space that you're in. Yeah, well, you're Gigantic. getting the first. You're getting the first look at it. Big U-shaped bar. That's uh, that's a move I I know you like. Uh, yeah. Everybody can see the action from there. Can you tell us anything about where you are? Well, we're in a uh, a neighborhood in suburban Boston, 
and we're targeting a sort of mid-May, late-May opening. But being a superstitious guy, we don't feel like until we get our certificate, certificate of occupancy, it wouldn't be right to sort of let the cat out of the bag. But when we do let the cat out of the bag, we'll let you guys at uh, boston.com know first, and uh, we'll get the word out. Well, that's exciting news. Good time to be opening. And hey, I really wanted to say thank you on behalf of everybody's local um, for the idea that we all go out and instead of uh, collecting through the Venmo, that we get out and uh, support by buying an entree or some cocktails to go maybe. What are some other things we can do, you think, to support our local restaurants right now? Oh, uh, for sure. Well, if you're feeling like you can, you know, afford to, to order something out, please, um, you know, order some to-go food. If you're feeling like you can sit inside uh, safely, please do that. And, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do. You can order some gift certificates from, from a restaurant and, and people out there in TV land should know that these purchases really sort of uh, help support particularly, you know, the restaurant in general, um, all the employees of the restaurant. There are many people that are unseen in the back of the house that uh, really are struggling right now. So we just really encourage everybody to, if, you, if you're feeling like you can afford it, if you're feeling it and get out there, please, by all means, do that. Well, that's exciting. Hey, speaking of getting out there and doing that, I'm getting a little thirsty and I'm thinking we might continue our conversation over a cocktail. I love it. Let's do um, it. So this is, a Gazin, this is the Gaz and uh, Marty Regan cocktail. I, I still remember reading The Joy of Mixology sitting at your bar, the B-side lounge. Um, I missed this one in there on the first pass, but um, this is kind of a fun one. I'm excited. It's going to be the first spin for you over there. We're going to start... Uh, on this kind of Manhattan riff, I guess, with uh, two ounces of the Tullamore Dew XO uh, rum finish. Um, but whatever favorite Irish whiskey you've got at hand, start with a couple ounces of that. And it's interesting to see this one. It's sort of like the old, uh, the old 411 banter, you know, two ounces to a half and a half ounce. But I see this as two to one. It's just split. The uh, vermouth and the and the grand monier um, so we'll do a half ounce each of those and now getting some questions from the chat lancer while we're going here can i use cointreau instead of grand monier yes you can um, jackson you'll remember be... that, that that grand monier was this first early bartender sort of go-to late night uh drink before cocktails before anything um, Grand Marnier sort of, you know, was solidified itself in the community as that go-to drink. And it's like a, a, a cocktail in a bottle, you know, cognac and sugar and, and, uh, and bitter oranges. It still holds up, you know, after all. Yeah, it's days. sort of fascinating how, like, uh, I mean, when Chartreuse mm -hmm. made some, some encroachment there, that made a, a lot of sense to me. You know, when Burnett did, that was just sort of like, hey, what are we all in this to torture each other? Um, I like those both in their time and space. Don't get me wrong, love them. But yeah, it, a, a little bit of grandma. What was wrong with that? You know, it's a it's a full meal. <laughs> um, I haven't put a I haven't put orange bitters in. I'm using uh, Regan's bitters. You can use Angostura. Um, and I'm going pretty light on this. To me, it's not like uh, you know. I I almost feel like sometimes in a Manhattan, Angostura is one of the dominant things. But here, I just want to get a couple of drops in there. I want to to sort of act like a like a light little salt pull all everything together gonna ice it up and give it a swirl i like you're mixing that in the tin there patrick yeah. the way i'm old school i i feel like it gets a little colder in a tin you know yeah it does get cold fast um and you can certainly use a tin at home or a pint glass if you've got it i think the right here you can see uh, and Pat is giving that a swirl that you can't quite see through, but he's doing the same thing here. He's like, he's been moving that ice around. He's not doing the, what do they used to call that? The chopster. Uh, he's not attacking it with the spoon, you know, he's right. just getting it cold, getting it diluted, getting it all into one thing. All righty. And right before I pull this out of here, I'm going to do a couple of twists 
quickly. Um, coming kind of down the lemon here with the peeler, nice one swath. If you don't have a peeler, you can definitely accomplish that move with a knife. Doing one for this drink. I'm gonna do another one. That drink that we've got coming up a little bit later. Patrick, do you want to tell the good folks out there why we stir that drink instead of shake it? Oh yeah, well it's um, yeah it's a matter of preference. Um, generally, a house will pick a style, right? And um, it's uh, we, we're stirring this because drinks like this Manhattan style drink where there's no fruit juice in it, uh, we're really trying to. We don't want to aerate the drink. We don't want to incorporate any bubbles into that. We're trying to achieve a velvety sort of smooth mouthfeel. And that's why. But if you if you want to shake it, man, it's your drink. Go right ahead. It's uh, it's not wrong. It's just it's just different. Yeah, it's it's interesting, like how they come out appearing different. But if you've shaken it with some grace, that uh, cloudiness dissipates pretty quickly. And I've done some blind tests a minute in, and people can't sometimes tell the difference. You know, if you've strained it well. Now I'm just gonna strain this out. I love the way it's pouring. It's like a ribbon pouring out of the glass. Just makes me know I'm gonna be getting a great texture here in a moment. And then I don't need to float the lemon twist in here. I'm just gonna uh, give it the, uh, the oil right over the top. And that's with the flesh side facing down. And gonna enjoy a Dubliner. Cheers to you, Patrick. Mm. Just as I remembered. Well, that is a spicy meatball. <laughs> mm. Yeah, the texture is just terrific. You know, mm. like um, that uh, little bit more sugar that's in the cognac than the vermouth, right? It's just, really? and, uh, and the fact that there's brandy in there too. Oh. It's kind of the best of both worlds. It's all playing around. And I like that a lot with a lemon twist. You know, one thing when you're making a drink like this, when you're trying to decide, do you like it with lemon, orange, nothing at all? Like we do due diligence and we'll always like line them up and kind of give them a little bit of a try. But um, I find that the, uh, I find the lemon sort of brings out all the orange flavors and notes in this, uh, maybe even more than, than an orange twist does. Mm. So it puts me in mind of all the variations too. Um, you know, I, I uh, you look at this and you think, oh, 411, that's like a red hook, or that's like, a, you know, a little Italy, or that's, a, and it's, it's so interesting to me. Those drinks line up when you want to taste somebody on them and put people in the different drinks, but they all have like, these different origins. And they, but they, they generally like kind of come into this zone of like, hey, two parts of this and one part of this or one part mm. of this stuff split up, you know, an endless variation. I remember uh, we used to, what was the, what was that phrase you used to use about kind of looking for a good drink? Cause if you did it at random, you'd have a billion combinations before you found a good one. I don't uh, know what you, I, I, I don't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> you, we, uh, at the B-side lounge you used to kind of like, look, it was like uh, finding a unicorn or something. Oh, well, like there you go. Yeah. It's, um, Certainly, you know, this drink is, um, this drink reminds me a lot of the Monte Carlo, you know, which is um, oh, yeah. a Benedictine and rye drink. And it choked, you know, it just, it's a real honest, it's a real honest drink, you know? And, um, and you know, I was thinking back when, when you asked me ab about doing this and, and we were talking about doing a hot toddy, I immediately sort of was thinking about you know, when you and I were coming up, you know, in the 90s, um, and people who are out there looking in and, and, and watching here tonight, um, it's, I guess you're, you're watching because you either really like cocktails, you know, and, uh, or you're bored silly, uh, or both, you know, which oh, is could be true. It's, um, but prior, it, you know, I'm kind of speaking to you right now, Jackson, and people who are of a certain age, um, when we were coming up and before there were cocktail bars, there was a time before you couldn't even really get a drink, you know, and uh, it was hard to get a drink. And we played this game, you know, you'd have to, 
you'd have even simple drinks like a martini or a Manhattan, you know, a Dubliner was out of the question. You know, you couldn't even think about getting someone to make this drink for you. So it, drinking, you know, and I said in, in the article that sort of we wrote that, uh, you know, we're in the golden age of drinking. You can walk out your front door and go anywhere and get a, a great drink. You know, it's, it's, it's terrific. But there was a time when it, it required some reconnaissance and, um, you know, seeking out a bartender and asking them, do you have lemons? Do you have granulated sugar? Can I, can I make a simple serve? You know what I mean? And, it, it, and, I, and so I recently had an experience. Um, and so it, this would lead, of course, to um, or could lead to some really dirty looks, you know, from the bartender. And, um, and so there, there were some good experiences doing this and there were some terrible experiences doing this, you know. But what, what it did is, is it led us, people like us that wanted, wanted these drinks, we sort of got tired of asking for favors and, and we just decided to do it ourselves. And, um, right. and that's how the whole thing, the, the cocktail renaissance was born, is we just figured, well, we'll just do it ourselves now, you know? And, um, and I had an experience recently, um, I happened to just love hot toddy, you know? And I can, you know, as a bartender, a bar owner, bar manager, a bar enthusiast, you know, there are certain drinks in a bar, in my opinion, just one man's opinion, that sort of tell a story about the, the establishment that you're in. You know, it's um, and the look that a bartender gives you when you say the word hot toddy, okay, tells you a lot about where you are. You know, and I was recently I met a pal of mine for um, for dinner at Alcove at, at North Station, and I um, I don't know out there, uh, viewers, if you've not been to Alcove, when we get off this call, please log on to Resi and make a reservation. And it's a fantastic place. It's a proper restaurant, a proper bar with proper bartenders. And so I walked in there and I sat at the bar and it was a bitter cold night. And uh, the whole walk over, I was like, man, I just want a hot toddy for you know? And so I sat down and I said to Hugh, who was the excellent barman. And I said, hey, Hugh, you know, and I, I was tentative. I said, is it okay, can I, get a, can I get a hot toddy? And Hugh gave me a dirty look. But it wasn't a look, you know, that he was giving me a look like he was surprised that I was even asking. Of course, you could get a hot toddy because you're at a proper uh, bar. And I said to my right, pal, right. I said, boy, we've come full circle. You know, there, there was you a time go. When you, you couldn't even you couldn't say those words. You know, so um, I was happy when you asked to make a hot toddy. It's one of my favorite drinks. Well, we're going to get to that in just a little bit. People seem to be enjoying this drink a lot. Um, and are asking some questions about other drinks that we could put Irish whiskey into. And you mentioned that Monte Carlo, which is sort of like a Bobby Burns, which totally. was with scotch, you know? Um, and so I would say, follow that thread, that Manhattan line of drinks, follow that, uh, follow that through subbing a wonderful Irish whiskey in it. And specifically, I mean, I, I think this XO rum finish is banging myself, mm -hmm. but specifically about uh, this whiskey and how um, it differs from Telemore Dew. We do have our sponsor on the line, uh, Jillian Murphy, the brand ambassador from Telemore Dew. He's going to give us just a couple of quick minutes on the XO finish and the rest of the line. Hi, Jillian. Hey, guys. How are you? Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Glad to have you. I'm delighted to be here. I think I'm joining you from the second most Irish city in the U.S. I'm in Chicago, but you guys in Boston definitely take the top there as being the most Irish. So happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone who's tuning in from Boston. Um, as Jackson mentioned, today we are drinking the Tullamore XO Rum Cask, um, which is truly one of my favorite and most delicious Tullamore Dews. So it is the same triple blend as the Tullamore Dew original. You've got the grain whiskey in there for the sweetness, the malt whiskey for the fruitiness, and the pot still whiskey for that iconic Irish whiskey spice. It's triple distilled, so it's going to be exceptionally smooth. And we've got a triple cast maturation, the same as the original. Now, how this differs, this one goes on to be matured for about three to six months in a Caribbean rum cask. So it's a Demerara rum cask. We get them from Guyana and we... Um, finish them in our own distillery in Tullamore. And now, even though that maturation, that finish is only about three months, what I love to the 
So when it gives us this beautiful brown sugar, molasses sweetness, and it just dials up that already existing caramel, vanilla, honey notes of the original um, and makes this a delightful sipper. So if you've not tried it yet, please go out, buy a dram from your local bar. You can do two at a time there and support your local account, or it should be available at all good liquor stores. Um, now, because it is St. Patrick's Day, I thought I would leave you guys with a St. Patrick's Day toast. So please all virtually raise your glasses to me and we will cheers to St. Patrick. Okay, so St. Patrick was a gentleman who through strategy and strength rid all the states from Ireland, here's a toasting to his health. But not too many toastings, lest you lose yourself and then forget the good St. Patrick and see all those snakes again. Salonja guys, happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks, Gillian. Hey, Patrick, where'd you go? Hey, how are you? Good. I am preheating my rather, it looks larger than it is, <laughs> my enormous pot. It's really normal size. The, but The Kool-Aid jug is what it looks like. Fun with Zoom. Um, I've been preheating mine on and off a little bit, but uh, hey, so why don't you take us through? You got us all so primed and in the mood for a great hot right. body. Why don't you take us through what to do? Well, I'm glad that you said you're preheating your glass. That's the best thing that you can do for your friends or uh, our guests is preheat your glass because you're going to be putting um, sort of room temp spirits in there and, and, and syrups and things like that. Um, and we want the drink to be to, to be hot, right? So hot toddies can you, you know, it, the beauty of the hot toddy is that it's um, as elemental and um, just sort of Basic is like making, it's an important, is making a, a, a cup of tea. And you should just look at it that way. And unlike other, um, you know, a lot of the cocktail world, a lot of recipes can be very precise, right? And, and rightfully so. Uh, but toddies in general, it's a little more loosey goosey. And um, you should look at any toddy recipe. Uh, even this toddy recipe we're going to talk about as sort of a jumping off point. And think about your own likes and tastes and, and uh, whatever you think, whatever spirit you like, whatever well, liqueur you like, will probably taste good in a toddy and you should experiment. And the beauty of toddies is, and certainly the classic toddy is an Irish whiskey toddy without, without a doubt. And so, um, and it's all, you know, it's sort of like an old fashioned sort of. You know, it's, um, you're going to have a spirit, you're going to have something sweet. Um, I like to put bitters in mine. And, um, and then you're going to have some sort of water base, some mixer. Oftentimes people use tea. Um, when you start incorporating tea flavors into it, it's just the world opens up and you can just sort of make, there's a million different ways you can go. But today we're going to, we've got the Tullamore Dew XO uh, rum cask. So we're gonna start off with uh, an ounce and a half of, um, so you're gonna pre-warm your glass, right? And um, which I have done because I've done it before. And I have a clear glass yeah, so here, Jackson has a fancy ceramic glass. So, so, so friends, we've dumped the hot water that warmed the glass, we've dumped that into our bucket. So you don't wanna pour the booze into that warm water that's been cooling. So just to be totally clear. <laughs> And, um, but I, I build this right in the glass that I'm, um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to be drinking from here. Ounce and a half of, um, of spirit. In this case, it's going to be um, Irish whiskey. And then I'm going to use honey. Okay. And a little bartender trick here. Honey can be a, a no pun intended, a sticky thing to work with. Okay. It's very thick and viscous. And so a bartender trick, Take a couple ounces of of, um, of of honey, and like if they're like four to one, add one part water, stir it up, and as you can see here, it's moving around quite a bit. It turns into a syrup. So I'm going to take a half ounce of of honey syrup. Okay, I'm going to put in just a little bit of lemon juice, half ounce of lemon juice, or you know, if you or less, whatever you like. Okay. I like a dash of bitters in mine. 
Bitters is a great way to incorporate a lot of flavor and just with just a little bit of liquid volume. That's why I like bitters and you should too, okay? And then hot water. And, um, you know, when I was at Alcove recently and I got this hot toddy, the thing that jumped out at me was that it was just a little bit beyond warm. And I said to Hugh, the barman, I said, and so it wasn't, sometimes you get a hot toddy and you have to let it sit and it burns your lip and the whole bit. And I said to Hugh, a proper barman, I said, how did you get that this is the perfect drinking temperature? And he put his arms up like this. He goes, of course it is. So Hugh is, uh, uh, you know, he, he built a fantastic drink. And then a little bit of uh, citrus. Jackson talked about lemon. Lemon just works all day long. You could also use orange here. Um, if I had cloves, I would have studded the cloves here. It's wonderful aromatics. And uh, just a spritz of lemon on here. And um, you can float it or you can not float it. I'm not going to float it because I, I cut a big piece. I went ahead and did one of these to show you friends how that, and that keeps the clove from getting free right. once it's in there. So, And so there's a million variants. If you like tequila, you can make easily make a tequila toddy. If you like pisco, you can make a pisco toddy. If you like scotch, you can make a scotch toddy. It, it's just endless. And when it comes to syrup, you can use just a simple syrup, which is just granulated sugar and water. You can use honey. Honey has a million different flavors. You know, it's not one note. You could make a cinnamon syrup. You could have maple syrup. It just goes on and on and on. So I would encourage you to, um, to get yourself a fancy little glass and, uh, and, you know, enjoy yourself. Winter's long here in New England. And a hot toddy now and again really, uh, you know, passes the day. Cheers. Ooh, that's quite Ooh. good. I like that. Um, I, I remember asking David Wondrich, why do they call the, the muddler a toddy stick? And he said, because it's the same drink. And I, it's an old fashioned toddy, it's the same thing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> that's why it's called, a, um, you know, that you, uh, that you really, you know, your ritual building of this drink is the same thing. You're creating these layers of the sugar, the bitters. All right spirit and then this is volumed with warm water as opposed to being volumed with cold water coming off of ice being incorporated it's a absolutely I wonder if you called this a, a winter old-fashioned people would freak out well, <laughs> maybe maybe i often there was a time when i thought that a um in the winter months um i've never done it maybe i'll do it yet um is that little a, a warm shot in the winter as uh, you know, it could be composed like this, but just a little, one little greeting, but you know, not hot, warm. I always thought right. that would be a great way to greet a guest. Almost like a, like a little taste of cider in the fall or something, yeah. hot cider in the fall or something like that. Cider, um, uh, people asking how much water we had, I added about five ounces, kind of the, yeah. based on the, the spirit that we were putting in there. And then, um, you know, uh, we, I mentioned the old fashioned and I mentioned the similarities of this drink and, and, and so did you. And uh, our friends are asking some questions about that, wondering just kind of on more common cold old fashions, what are some of your favorite variations on that? On old fashions? Yeah. Oh my God. Old fashioned is my favorite drink. It's just, it's just like, it's the most, um, oftentimes if someone brings me a spirit to taste, you know, a supplier or something. The very first thing I do is make it old fashioned with it. And I feel like if that, you know, the old fashioned will show off the spirit a little bit, a little bit of sugar, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, yeah. and, uh, and so I personally love rum old fashioned, cognac old fashions, um, just, you know, that is, um, again, same thing. You can, an old fashioned is, you know, spirit, sugar, bitters, and water. There's 9 million bitters out there. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's, uh, you could make, you could keep all the, the, ingredient, the other three ingredients the same and just change the bitters. And every time it's a different drink, you know? So it's, um, but I, I mean, I, I've, had, I've had good gin, you know, and Jennifer old fashioned. It's just, 
tequila old fashioned. It's, it, it, there's, there's no wrong answer. It's, um, is, but you know, you, you try and achieve balance and, and um, you'll get there. You know, you, if you keep trying, you'll get there. Well, um, it's, it's, that's, that's an exciting idea for a, a kind of a fictitious menu of old fashions. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. You know? A lot of different syrups and let's go, you know? Well, I can't wait to have a drink at that, uh, that U-shaped bar when the bar top's on it, Patrick. Thank yeah, you so well, much for spending some time with us Cocktail Club making drinks. Well, it's know? been my pleasure. Thank you for thinking. As my mother would say, thank you for thinking of me. Um, well, we're honored, you know, uh, and, uh, I can't say you're welcome to that. I just have to say thank you again. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> that's all the time we have for cocktail club, uh, for this St. Patrick's day. We are going to be back next week at our usual day and time Thursdays at 7 PM. Next week's guest is Jared Sedoian of Craigie on Maine, and we'll be making drinks with scotch whiskey. Make sure you follow the link from our signup page to Gordon's Wine and Spirits to pick up the boston.com scotch whiskey cocktail kit. You'll be supporting off their plate and getting everything you need for next week's cocktail club. Thanks very much to our sponsor, Telemordu, to Jillian, to you, Patrick, of course. And thanks all of you, friends. Cheers. <laughs>